Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating system that is memory management. Memory management. So the topic uh, name itself indicates how the memory will be managed in the, our operating system. So this is a one uh, very important feature of operating system. Okay, so so we can also say this is a resource. One is one of the resource. So we need to utilize the resource efficiently. How efficiently we can utilize the resource? For example, if there is a CPU, so we know that CPU is nothing but a processor, right? So any process in the operating system will be executed by the CPU. Now where are the processes so processes will be residing in the secondary memory so this is the secondary memory so from the secondary memory so here the processes will be residing the processes okay process 1 process 2 etc etc so these processes will be stored the files simply we can say the files files will be stored in the secondary memory and the cpu can be getting the files from the main memory that means cpu can execute the instructions only from the main memory so what we have to do so whenever a process wants to get executed that process will be retrieved to the main memory so this is the main memory main memory so this process will be retrieved to the main memory so that the cpu will, can be accessing the processes from the main memory and it will be executed and those processes will be executed now see this we can call it as a ram okay ram so whenever there is a power off automatically whatever the information stored in this main memory that will be erased but secondary memory so if even though there is a power of that data which will be available in the secondary memory will be safe so only the cpu will be executing the processes which are available in the main memory so immediately whatever the process wants to be get executed that will be copied to the main memory so everything will be taken care by the cpu okay everything will be taken care by the cpu cpu is nothing but a process okay and in the cpu there will be one more memory okay so this memory we call them as a registers registers very small size registers will be very small size and in between the main memory there is a one more memory called cache memory cache memory so cache memory means the frequently used instructions or the frequently used processes will be available in the cache memory okay so this cache memory will be in between main memory and the cpu so the accessing will be somewhat speed than the main memory okay so it will be loading into the cache memory from the cache memory cpu so here the hierarchy is whenever the process wants to be get executed first the cpu will be uh, checking that process whether it is available in the registers or not because these registers are inside the cpu only those registers are designed inside the in the inside the cpu only right so first it will check in the registers if not it will check into the so this is the first one if not in the registers then it will check in the cache memory if there is no cache if the, if the, the process doesn't in in the cache memory this is the third place where it will check if this place also there is no process available then it will find the process in the secondary memory and that from that secondary memory it will be copied into the main memory and directly from the main memory it will be executed if the same process is being executed multiple times that that process will be loaded into this cache memory so here the operating system means how efficiently this memory will be utilized okay so there will be different types of addresses logical address and the physical address 
So in order to load the data from secondary memory to the main memory, it requires some addresses and it requires some address binding also. So the complete information about the addresses, different types of addresses, address boundings and everything comes under this memory management. So how efficiently utilizing the resources? We are saying memory is one resource. Okay. Now, the three criteria we need to discuss in this particular memory means the first one is size. Okay. The first one is a size. And the next one is uh, time to access or access time. Time to access. And then the next one is cost cost see we need to use the same thing we need to use we have seen four types of memory in this session right one is a registers okay which are very close to cpu catchy memory main memory and secondary memory coming to the size okay coming to the size So I'll, I'll write here, right? Size. According to the size, see, registers are a very small in size. Mostly it will be in terms of bits only, 64 bits or 128 bits. So si registers will be occupying, the, the, the size of the registers are very, very less. So first comes under registers. So I'm writing the size low to high. Okay, low to high. The size is low for registers first. Then cache memory, which are larger than registers, but they are also very small. So cache memory. Next, coming to the main memory. So main memory will be the capacity or the size of main memory is more than cache. Okay, more than cache, but smaller than secondary memory. So the next comes under the main memory and finally we are having secondary memory secondary memory will be high when compared to the remaining so this is low to high this is the information from low to high coming to the second time to access time to access so coming to the time to access see registers are very close to cpu so the access time will be very less so it will be very speed to access the data because memory th these registers are inbuilt in the cpu so the accessing the data from the registers will be very fast so access time comes with the registers according to speed based upon speed okay registers are fast accessing right and next Catchy memory, so which is in between the CPU and main memory. So the next category is catchy. The time to access the data will be fast. Okay. And uh, the access time will be um, somewhat more when compared to the memory. And next comes with the main memory. And next comes with the secondary memory. So if any process or a file that is available in the secondary memory the access time will be more okay the access time will be more so if the data is available in the main memory so the access time will be better when compared to the secondary memory and if the file is available in the cache memory the access time will be better when compared to the main memory and if the data is available in the registers then that will be the very very best to access the data because that is far close to the CPU. Okay, so this is about time to access, access time. Coming to the cost, coming to the cost, okay, based upon the size, it will be expensive. Okay, if size is low, it is more expensive. So this coming to first comes and comes with the registers the expensive high to low okay high to low cost high to low 
so resistors will be very high and then comes with the cache memory when compared to the resistor somewhat low next one main memory main memory so when compared to the cache main memory is somewhat low and the next one is secondary memory okay so if you talk about the memory we need to know about the size of the i mean the criteria to access based upon the size or time to access or cost so here we have seen a different categories of memories and now our from the next session we are going to discuss about how the processes will be transferred from secondary memory to the cpu so here transferring the data from secondary memory to main memory or main memory to cpu is in terms called as a swap in and swap out swap in means loading swap swap out means sending so here we are going to use a different addresses logical address and uh, uh, physical address so all these things we will be discussing in our further sessions so how efficiently we are using the memory how efficiently we are making the process moving from secondary memory to main memory and main memory to the cpu so once again i am saying any process will be executed only by the cpu only through the main memory if the process is in secondary memory the cpu can't access the file directly from the secondary memory the cpu can only access the file from main memory or cache or registers right so i'll stop here and uh, if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much